Hi, this is Chris Ostrowski, Oracle Consultant with Fourth Month Consulting. And in this video lesson, we're going to take a look at one of the pieces of the Oracle Web Logic Server called a Node Manager. And the Node Manager is a piece that allows you to administer your environment a heck of a lot more easily. Uh, you don't have to have it up and running. You can start all your managed servers from the command line if that's what you'd like to do. But using the Node Manager allows you to start them and shut them down through a graphical interface, uh, which is a lot more easy to use. The Node Manager also has a lot more capabilities uh, associated with it. We're not going to go into them in this video just for time's sake, but we're going to take a look at how we can configure the Node Manager and then use the Node Manager to start up and shut down our managed servers. If you don't know what a managed server is, uh, we're going to have a, a bunch of videos on the different managed servers that are out there. Uh, but you can think of them as a grouping together of a bunch of different web technologies from Oracle. So there's a managed server for SOA technologies. There's a managed server for some of the legacy technology like Portal and Forms and Reports and Discover. There's a lot of different uh, managed servers that are out there. And you can license the different pieces that you need to go along with your web logic server. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to hop into a PuTTY session and get over to my server. So I already have an entry in PuTTY and if you're not familiar with PuTTY it's a, uh, a secure way of getting access to your Unix machines. So I'm going to open this up here and I'm going to do something you probably should never do in real life. I'm going to log in as root and then I'm going to SU over to the user that I need which in this case is Oracle. In my Oracle WLS directory is where I've installed all my WebLogic server pieces. And if you take a look at that directory, uh, anybody who's worked with the WebLogic server should be familiar with this directory structure. If I do a find from this directory on something called nodemanager.properties, we'll see that that file doesn't exist. Um, it doesn't exist until you run the node manager for the first time. And unfortunately, it's a little bit of a quirky uh, way Oracle has set this up, is that in order for us to use the node manager to shut down and start up our different managed servers, we're going to have to edit that file. So the only way we can get to the file is to start up the node manager, get that file, shut the node manager down, modify the file, and then start the node manager up again. Uh, it's a little bit of a clunky process, but it, it's something you'll only have to do one time. So I'm going to look for uh, the script to actually start up my web logic server. And you can see that I have a couple of start web logic.sh files. I have two in the SOA domain directory and two in the base domain directory. I'm going to run this one that's in my SOA domain directory so we can get that up and running. So if I whoops, if I highlight that and then yep, I got it there twice. So let's try to straighten this out. And I'm going to throw an ampersand at the end of this file so it runs in the background. And I get returned back to my command line so I can keep using this particular command line. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the WebLogic server, there's a lot of really scary looking information here as it scrolls by. What we're looking for is a status of running. And I'm going to pause the video right now and then restart it again when the actual running comes up. So the WebLogic server has gone through and it's done all its uh, startup procedures and you can see that we have this server started in running mode and that's what we're looking for. That gives us an indication that the WebLogic server is actually up and running. So I'm going to hop into a browser now. I'm going to hop into uh, Google Chrome. You can certainly use whatever browser you'd like. And I'm going to hop over to my server and obviously the IP address is going to be different uh, depending on where you've installed your WebLogic server. But if we go to the console, we can log into that. And you can see we're at the administration console here where we can see a lot of information about what's going on inside of our WebLogic environment. I'm going to click Servers here under Environment, so it shows all of the different servers that are available to me. And this is uh, an indication of the managed servers that I have associated inside my environment. And you can see there's a BAM server and there's an SOA server, and they're both shut down right now. 
If I click on the control tab, I have the ability to go in there and actually start up and shut down. But because I don't have my node, ru node manager running right now, when I try to do this, I'm going to get an error message. So let me highlight the SOA server. Say I want to start that guy up. I click on start. And in a second or two, it comes back and it says the node manager associated with the machine is not reachable. All the servers are currently in a state which is incompatible with the operation. So it's basically saying because I don't have the node manager up and running, I can't shut down or start up any of my managed servers from the graphical interface. And that's something I definitely like to do. So if we go back into our command line, there's a script that allows us to start up the node manager. So if we do a find again, We can see that under uh, the server directory, there's the start node manager.sh. And when we run this file, it's going to go ahead and it's going to create that node managers.property file that I had mentioned earlier. Unfortunately, when it creates that, and this is another little quirk of Oracle, it's going to create it with a parameter that's still not going to allow me to start up my, my uh, managed servers. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to execute this guy. And again, I'm going to put an ampersand at the end of him so I have control back to my file. So it'll go ahead and it'll start it all up. So you can see there's a whole bunch of information. There's my SOA domain. There's my base domain. Uh, the secure socket listener is now running on port 5556. So it seems like I've done everything I need to. So hopefully I would be able to go in here and start up my servers. But as we're going to see, it's not really true yet. So if I select SOA server again and I click start, this time it's thinking about it. And after a few minutes, you can see I've compressed the video here. After a few minutes, you can see that the SOA server appears that it's up and running. It says task completed, and it looks like it's running. But it really kind of isn't, even though it seems like it is. And this, again, goes back to that setting in the node manager.properties file, which we're going to revisit here in a second. How do I know that the SOA server really isn't running, even though the administration console kind of says it is? Well, there's another tool that you can use, and I'm going to copy this IP address so I don't have to type it again. But if you open up another browser and you go into the EM, which is the Enterprise Manager for the application server, we're going to log into this and we're going to see that even though it kind of seems like the console thinks we're running, we really aren't. So I'm going to hop over here and I'm going to log in with the same credentials that I logged in to the administration console. And because this is the first time I log in, I get prompted for, you know, do I use a screen reader? Do I want to see these preferences again? I'll only be shown that the, the first time I actually log in. But when we come over here, we take a look at all of the different pieces that are available to us. The SOA server is still down. I'm not sure why all this is highlighted here. I didn't mean to. Uh, you can see that as part of the Enterprise Manager, the SOA server here is still down, even though the administration console says it's up. And it took me a long time to kind of figure out what in the world was going on here. But unfortunately, this all goes back to one of the settings in the node manager.properties file. So I'm going to hop back into here, and I'm actually going to shut down my SOA server because we're going to have to go through and, and reconfigure this again so that it's actually running properly. And while that's kind of chugging away in the background, I'm going to hop back here into my terminal window. And if you remember, I did that find on node manager.properties earlier, and we didn't have it. So when we do the find this time, it in fact is there. So the first thing we want to do is we want to shut down uh, the node manager. So we can do this at the Unix level. So if we do a PS minus EF and do a grep on node manager, there's the uh, process that's running there in the background. So if I just do a kill minus 9, 71, 68, I can shut down the node manager. And then I want to edit that node manager dot properties file. And we need to make a change to one of the lines there. So let's go into this guy. And we're going to edit him. And this is the, we just happen to stop on the line that we need to look at. Start script enable, for some reason, gets defaulted to false. And again, there must be a reason that Oracle does this. I'm not exactly sure why. But 
what it does is it stops you from actually fully starting up your managed server. So you have to change this to start script enable is equal to true. So I'm going to save this file. I'm going to go back and I'm going to run the, the node manager program again. So I'll kick him off again and we should see the uh, secure socket listener started on port 5556. If we hop back into our browser again, we still show that the task is in progress, but we just have to refresh this guy, and it should come back that it has in fact shut down. So let's try this again. So let's start up the SOA server. We click on start. Again, I'm going to pause the video because this takes a few minutes to go, but when we come back, it should be started up, and then we'll hop into the enterprise manager and take a look to make sure everything's okay. Welcome back. As you can see from our web page here that the task is completed, the SOA server is now up and running. So if we hop into the Enterprise Manager and we refresh the page there, hopefully it will show that the SOA server is in fact up and running now. Oh, we still have it down. We just needed to refresh the page a couple of times. And now you can see that the SOA server is in fact up and all the components that go along with the SOA server are in fact running. So the Node Manager is a pretty powerful piece of software that comes along with the Oracle WebLogic server, but it can definitely be a little tricky to set up and get running. But once you do it, makes your administration of your WebLogic environment a heck of a lot easier. For more information about Oracle products and more collateral like Oracle videos and our blog, please go to our page at www.fourthmonth.com. This is Chris Estrasse.